Today, my, for my second YouTube installment, I'm going to be making a pizza and it's going to be with goat cheese and peppers. We're going to do roasting some of the peppers and we're going to put some on raw. And this is a very unusual pizza. Got it from a recipe from a friend of mine, uh, Joe, which she got from GQ. And I've never seen it in a pizzeria. I've never seen it anywhere. It, and it's delicious. Everyone who has it goes, where did you get that pizza? So we're going to start, we're going to make the, everything from scratch. So we're going to start off with, with my dough. And I like to have my, uh, I like to go half and half. Half uh, whole wheat and half white. So um, we're going to do one and a half of each. And I just do an alternate here so it kind of pre-mixes it a bit. So when you're making these, uh, anything in a food processor, you want to mix all your dry ingredients first. So I've got the one and a half cups of, of uh, white and uh, whole wheat. And then I'm going to use uh, one and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. And this is, I've got instant yeast. Okay, and then we're going to use one teaspoon of salt. And with baking, things have to be pretty darn right. It's not just like a pinch of this and a pinch of that. You got, you got to be pretty accurate. So we're going to get some water. And that is one and two thirds cups. Once we got our ingredients, okay, we're going to mix them up dry. Okay, and then we slowly drizzle our water. This is the easiest way to make dough. You can make it in a bread machine, but it takes an hour and 40 minutes. This takes like one minute. Okay, then we need oil. Then we're going to uh, a lot of people use sugar. I like to use honey. I think it's a better taste. Okay. And then oil. All right. That's it. We're done. So now I'm just going to put this into a bowl and we're going to let it rise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to cut that out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Come on, cut. <laughs> I can't do it. I'll tell you this, man. All I want to do is have my kicks before this whole shit house goes up in flames. Into a, into a bowl, and we're gonna let it rise for a couple hours in a, in a warm spot. And through the magic of television, I've got one right here. <laughs> so there we go. That's that's our dough, and it's, it, it rose up quite a bit. I don't know if you can see that, but as soon as I do this, it falls right down again. We're going to uh, roll out the pizza now because we want to uh, we want it to rise a little bit again after we've rolled it out. As you can see, this doesn't look like your traditional dough. It's it's a lot waterier. Um, this this particular recipe makes it a really nice chewy crust. The beauty about using a food processor as well as except for by hand. My friend Joe, she makes it all by hand because she doesn't have a food processor. But um, using that, the blade does a lot of the kneading for you. So you don't have to do a heck of a lot of kneading yourself. Once, I just, I just do it this part because I like to try and get the air out of it. Because if you have too many air pockets in your pizza, it kind of puffs up and uh, it's kind of wrecks it a bit. Okay, our dough is ready. Weapon. You can, of course, if you're, you can always go buy a pre made crust. Rolling, I usually like to try and start from the middle and work my way out. I haven't yet mastered the uh, twirling it around, so you'll have to wait for maybe 
maybe my fourth YouTube or something like that. I might be ready. So that's pretty good. I don't try to make a perfect round shape because because I don't. Cornmeal. Cornmeal helps it from uh, just not sticking on the uh, pizza pan. Some people use flour, but I like the cornmeal. It just creates a really, really thin barrier, and hardly any of it actually sticks to the pizza. It works pretty well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now what I like to do is cover that and let it, it'll, it'll rise again actually at this point. So we just take a cloth, put it somewhere nice and warm. So now that we've got our, our dough is, is rising, I'm gonna roast the red peppers. A, a gas grill, it's a nice, nice way to do it. Or you can just throw it in a cast iron frying pan, throw it in there for a little while. And uh, that's, that's what we're gonna do. As you can see, I've just got a plain red bell pepper and an ancho chili pepper. So this, this is going to be in place of sauce. I don't like to use a whole lot of oil. I love these vaporizers. You just get the right amount, not too much. Cover everything just a little bit with the oil. And that way we're going to get a nice, a nice browning, blackening kind of thing on the pepper. I'm going to give that 15 minutes. So now that we've got our pepper roasting in the oven, we're going to use uh, fresh peppers, just bell peppers for, for color and for taste, and jalapenos. These are nice and hot, and they play off this, the goat cheese really well, and we're using the, the mozzarella uh, as a binder to keep the whole pizza together. You kind of you kind of need that with the pizza. So uh, we're just doing a little mise en place here. We're getting close. This is, uh, we're eating soon. I know, uh, Couple people here are kind of hungry, so the pressure's on. So we're just going to be laying these on the pizza just like this, and so they're going to be they're going to be partially cooked because of the time that it's in the oven, obviously. But they're still going to have kind of a juicy, bit of a juicy flavored little, uh, not not a completely cooked kind of thing. So, warned you before. I'll warn you again. Don't touch your eyes, don't touch any sensitive parts of your body after you cut jalapenos if you don't wash your hands really well. So I take the, um, I take the seeds and the, and the white pith out of the jalapeno because that's really where most of the heat is. I want, I want the flavor of the jalapeno and I want a bit of the heat, but I don't want it to be overpowering because if it's too spicy, you kind of you lose the taste. If you want it really hot, just leave the seeds in. If you want it just normal, take them out. So after this, we're going to uh, cut the cheese and uh, we're going to be ready to bake up this pizza. When I use the mozzarella, I try and get the one with the uh, lowest amount of moisture because otherwise it's just going to make a soggy pizza and nobody likes a soggy pizza. There, now the goat cheese is a little bit little trickier because it's, uh, well it's goofy. Once again, the uh, kind of cheese we end up with. This one's pretty good. I could almost slice that. So I'm going to just leave this here like this because I'm just going to take it out as I, uh, as I need it when I'm putting it on the pizza. And that, uh, okay, we, we're, we're prepped. We're ready for that pizza as soon as I take the roasted red peppers out. So give me a minute and um, Stefan, 
Are you excited? I am. Now this, these roasted peppers, I'm going to dice them up. They are going to take the place of a sauce. We're using the peppers. Okay, so now you've, you notice the pizza did rise a little bit here, which is what we want. This is going to be so good. It doesn't hurt that the colors are uh, nice and contrasting. We're always into color. People, people eat with their eyes first. So now I'm going to take the rest of these peppers. So these are the uncooked ones now. And they're going to taste a little bit different than the cooked ones, obviously. A little bit juicier and a little more, uh, a little bit of a raw taste, basically. Put it up too much because pizzas can get, uh, they can get sort of too heavy and then they don't, they don't, they don't eat well because they do, you have to eat them with a knife and fork then and that's kind of, I don't know, I like, but the pizza test is if you can eat it with your hand and it doesn't flop over. So we'll see, we'll see if I, if I pass the muster on that one. So we got lots of jalapenos, that should be good. So now this is the part that keeps it all together kind of. Doesn't really add much flavor. Mozzarella doesn't really have much of anything, really. It just, uh, but I think it brings out the flavor of, of the vegetables, actually. Okay, now this this next part. This is what makes the pizza different than any other pizza you've ever had. This this combination of these peppers and the goat cheese. I guarantee you're just gonna you're gonna go. What was I doing before I had that pizza? All your friends are going to want the recipe. You can just send them off to my YouTube. So I've got my oven nice and hot. I'm, I'm putting the pizza in on the uh, middle rack. And it's about, it's about four and a quarter. I like a, I like a hot oven for pizza. I think it makes, uh, it makes a better pizza. Okay, we're, uh, we're ready to pop, put her in the oven. There we go. Don't drop it. She's done. Okay, now I like to uh, put her on a cooling rack for a few minutes. Just let it, you gotta let the pizza set. If you cut into it right away, it's just gonna it's just gonna go mush and fall apart. Merry Christmas, by the way. There, it's gonna be uh, still nice and hot, but it's um, yeah, it's settled down. So now, the last part is fresh cilantro, and. You gotta you, you gotta use the cilantro because the flavor is amazing. The, the the jalapeno, the cilantro, and the goat cheese, some kind of a magical combination. So if you don't skip the cilantro just because your friend doesn't like cilantro, Stefan, <laughs> he can pick it off. So there we go. We're done. It's all over but the eating.